everyone and welcome to this tutorial video on how to mail merge in Word. Now mail merge is something that's been a part of Word for many many years. I can remember using it way back in the late 90s so it's definitely something that's clearly still useful as it continues to be included in later releases of Word. And in this video I just want to show you very quickly how you can do a quick mail merge and if you're not sure what mail merge is, it's basically a way of creating letters, envelopes, labels, or even emails in bulk. So if you have a list of 500 contacts stored off in Excel somewhere, and you want to send a letter out, the same letter, to all of those contacts, mail merge makes it super simple to create 500 letters that are personalized to each person in your contact list. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Now what you can see on the screen here is that I've already created a very rough basic letter. Now you don't have to start from a letter, you could start from a blank document or any document that you wish. But we're going to mail merge letters in this case. So I've got my letter open, I'm going to jump up to this mailings ribbon at the top and you'll see that we have a group called Start Mail Merge. And the first button in this group, I'm going to click it, and you can see there we have a choice. We need to select what we're merging. So I'm doing letters. Now, it looks like nothing has actually happened, which is essentially correct, but we then need to move on to selecting our recipients. So it kind of goes start mail merge, then you select your recipients. Let's click the drop down. Now I have three options in here. I could choose to type my list of recipients. So if I didn't have them stored off somewhere else, and I would say this is probably better if the list of recipients isn't particularly long, so maybe if you have 10 to 15 people that you want to send this letter to, you could definitely do it this way. And you would go in and you would start typing in that information manually, so on and so forth. Now, the columns that you see here where it says title, first name, last name, so on and so forth, those are completely customizable. You do have a customized columns option at the bottom. So if you want to add different columns, you have the option of doing that in there. Alternatively, you can delete out any columns that you don't need. So you can type your list of contacts essentially on the fly. Now, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to select recipients and we're going to say use an existing list. Now I have all of my contact details, so their names and addresses, stored off in an Excel spreadsheet. And that is what we're going to use. You also see that I do have a third option, which is I can choose from my Outlook contacts as well. But we're going to use an existing list. So now I need to browse and find where my list is stored. And I can see it just here, contactlist.xlsx. It's an Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to select it click on open and it's asking me now which sheet are my contact names and addresses located on. So by default when you create a new Excel spreadsheet it's going to give you three sheets and I know that my contacts are stored on sheet one. I also know that the first row of my data contains column headings. Now if I want to very quickly check that spreadsheet, and I can see there, I don't have too many contacts in this example, you may have hundreds, but I've got about eight or so just there. I can see that yes, I do have headings, and I can see that those contacts are in fact located on sheet one. So a quick double check there, just to make sure that the options I'm selecting for my mail merge are correct. I'm gonna say, okay. Now again, it doesn't look like it's done a great deal. Now I do have an option here of editing my recipient list. So if I click edit recipient list, it's going to show me all of those contacts in Excel, which have now essentially been attached to Word. And if I didn't want to maybe include all of my contacts, so maybe this letter doesn't need to go out to absolutely everybody, I could come in here and I could untick the people that I don't want to send this letter to. Now I do want to send it to everyone, so I'm going to make sure that they're all selected. You also have some other options down here for refining your recipient list. So if you want to do things like uh, sort them into alphabetical order, if you want to filter out certain contacts, maybe you want to find any duplicate entries, you can definitely do that from down here as well. 
So if you need to make any edits to your recipient list once you've attached it, jump into Edit Recipients List. I'm going to click OK because I don't need to make any changes. And now what we need to do is we need to insert our merge fields into the letter. And that is where this next group comes in. So this Write and Insert Fields group. We have an Address Block option, we have a Greeting Line option, and we have an Insert Merge Field option. So let's start out with this Address Block field. And you can see here the screen tip says that this will add an address to your letter and that you can specify the formatting and where you place that address block within your letter. So in general, when it comes to letter writing, most of the time you will have the address at the top of the letter. So I'm going to move my mouse to the top of my letter and I'm going to click Address Block. Now it's asking me what format do you want the addresses to appear in. So for all of my contacts, and you can see them in a preview over here, and I can scroll through them, these are all of my contacts from my Excel spreadsheet, I can choose how I want this name to be formatted. So if I just want to show their first name, I could do that or I can show their full name and if they have anything like junior or senior afterwards, I can also include those. So very important that you select the format that you're looking for. And I'm also including to insert the postal address. Again, if you don't want to, you can remove that completely. Now, my contacts don't have a company name, but if they did, I would probably want to ensure that I've got the insert company name option also selected. And then finally at the bottom, very important, format the address according to the destination country region. So I'm located in the United Kingdom, which has a very different address format to somewhere like the United States. So I want to make sure that I'm using the correct format for my country. So I'm going to have a quick scroll through this preview just to make sure my addresses are looking good, which they are and I'm going to click on OK. And you can see there it's inserted that address block. So I might want to come in and make a few little formatting changes. So I might want to give this less or more space, but I essentially have my address and I can use these arrows at the top in this preview results group to scroll through the different addresses just to see what those are going to look like when we complete our merge. Now, if I click on this preview results button, you can see it toggles me between the actual result and the field that I've inserted. So when I turn preview results off, it's just showing me that address block field at the top there. But I'm going to say preview results. Now, the next thing I might want to add is some kind of greeting line. So I might want to say dear Vicky or to Miss Matthews, something along those lines. So back to our merge fields and we're going to insert a greeting line. And this is where you get to specify the greeting line format. So you can have dear or you can have to. I'm going to select dear. And then you can select if you wanted to say Mr. Randall, if you want the full name, so on and so forth. And again, you get a preview of what yours is going to look like underneath. So you can see if I change this option, it says dear Vicky Matthews. I'm going to go with dear Miss Matthews and click on OK. Now, finally, another cool thing that you can do here is that you can insert the individual fields wherever you like in your document. So if we read through this first paragraph of this letter, it says, thank you for your recent inquiry. Now, I might want to personalize this letter even more by saying, thank you, Vicky, for your recent inquiry. So all I need to do is go to the point within the letter where I want to add my merge field and then I jump up to my write and insert fields group and if I click the drop down underneath insert merge fields it's going to show me all the merge fields I have access to and these are essentially all of the column headings from my source document from my spreadsheet and now I can choose which one or which ones I want to use so I could say just first name so that's going to say Thank you, Vicky. Alternatively, I could say, thank you, add the title, Miss, space, and then add the last name, space. So thank you, Miss Matthews, for your recent inquiry. Now for my letters, that's a bit too formal. I just want the first name in there. So I'm gonna utilize that first name field. 
And again, if I toggle preview results, you'll see what that looks like because we're seeing those merge fields within our letter. And that is pretty much it. We've set up our document as we want it to be. Now, all we need to do is finish our merge, which essentially is going to generate this letter personalized to everybody in my contact list. So the final option is finish and merge. Now, if you want to print these letters immediately, you can select that document or you can choose to send email messages. Now, for what I'm doing, I want to see all of the letters on the screen before I decide if I want to print them or if I want to email them. So I'm going to say edit individual documents. I'm going to say merge all records and click on OK. And now what I get, if I scroll down, here is my first letter, which is personalized to Vicky. And if I scroll down, you'll see that I get the next letter, which is now personalized to Ben. The next one is for Ryan, so on and so forth. So it's created all of my letters en masse for me, saved me so much time by utilizing that mail merge feature in Word. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can mail merge for lots of different things, not just letters. You can mail merge email addresses, envelopes, and labels as well. And we'll be covering some of these in later video tutorials. But for now, that's it. That is how you mail merge in Word. I hope that was useful to you, and I will see you in the next tutorial. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.